What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of my new career mode. This is episode number 20 and today we have a look at the league table. As you can see, three games to go. We are three points behind our rivals Juventus who are top. They have 76 points, we have 73 points. And the final three fixtures see on match day one, Torino take on Kiev Verona whilst Inter fa uh, face Juventus. Match day two is us away at the San Siro taking on Milan and Juventus take on Napoli. And in the final match day of these final three games... We take on Sassena at home and Hellas Verona take on Juventus. So both sides are already qualified for the Champions League, which is fantastic. That's our aim, really, because we upped that in uh, in January. But right now we're going for the title, you know, Champions League. Yeah, of course, we're, we're, we're really pleased to know we'll be playing in it next season. But let's be honest here, we know what we're really after. We want the Serie A title and Juventus are desperate not to lose there. So as you can see right now, just three games to go, three points in it. It is so tight. And of course, don't forget, due to our head-to-head, record being better than Juventus it does mean that if we do finish level on points we will claim the Serie A title so it's going to be very very tight it's going to be a really frantic finish and we cannot afford to slip up now so we do indeed take on Kiev Verona for the first game of today's episode as Juventus travels to the San Siro to take on Inter and the first chance in our game would fall in the sixth minute here is for Muru swings it across and looks for Qualiarella but he former Juventus striker header goes just over the bar and behind for a goal kick so still nil nil great chance for the 10th minute does Pulaski finds Qualiarella right again. He picks out Gabbiadini down the right-hand side here. Great chance to make it 1-0. The shot is well saved by the goalkeeper though and Kievo Verona clear. So still 0-0 but a really fast start by Juventus. Exactly what we needed. Just like we did against Genoa. And the first goal would be scored as well in the 24th minute. Poloski getting past his man by the byline. Drilling in across. Picking out Florenzi at the far post. He puts it in and makes it uh, Torino 1. Kievo Verona nil so really really nice build up there because Poloski went down the right hand side I say really nice build up as Poloski went down the right hand side he could have gone down there from the slide challenge but instead stayed on his feet rode the challenge and drills in across instead picks out Florenzi and Florenzi picks out the bottom corner so Torino 1 Kievo Verona nil not really nice build up don't know why I said that but even so 1 nil to Torino and it's Florenzi with his ninth goal of the season making it 1 nil to the home side in the 34th minute a great chance for Kievo Verona to equalize but his shot goes just wide the post and behind for a goal kick so still 1 nil and in the 39th minute another great chance for Kiev of Verona to equalize they get themselves inside here with number 63 shooting but he puts the shot wide in the post and behind for a goal kick so still 1-0 going into the break and at half time as you can see jubilation here at the Stadio Olimpico de Torino because Inter were beating Juventus by a goal to nil so as things stood we were going to be returning to the top of the table on the head-to-head -head record going into the penultimate game of the season so delighted with that and what a way to start the second half as well because 15 minutes after the restart we get ourselves our second goal of the game it's Gabbiadini heading in from a Banassi free kick making it T uh, Torino 2 Chieva Verona 0 with his 10th goal of the season I said in the last episode what a great debut season this guy's had he's been fantastic for us he's now into double figures it's Torino 2 Chieva Verona 0 with a nice little assist from Banassi there who for some reason wouldn't let me celebrate with him but even so 2-0 to Torino in the 76th minute Chieva Verona almost got themselves back in the game this shot was well saved by Padelli and eventually cleared away and it was how the game would finish as well Torino 2, Kievo Verona 0, delighted with the win. And of course, because Inter were beating Juventus, we thought we might be returning to the top of the table after the game. I forgot to show the match stats as well, so apologies for that. But even so, sadly, as you'll see, Inter did lose their lead against Juventus. They did draw the game, which means that that does keep Juventus top of the table by just a single point with two games to go so it just could not be getting tighter at the top of the table right now it's absolutely crazy it's just I mean honestly I just I, I don't know what's going to happen like I really don't it's going to be so tight all the way to the finish with just one point between the two sides of us having a better head-to-head -head record I mean seriously like you know who is your money on right now it's just impossible to be a betting man in this scenario because you just don't know who's going to come out with the trophy but regardless take on Milan for the second and final game of today's episode here as we travel to the San Zero. Obviously, Juventus just got back from the San Siro after taking on Inter, and of course, they drew that game. So, as we take on Milan, Milan are desperate to keep their Champions League hopes alive as they're currently sitting in fourth place. And of course, the top three qualify for the Champions League come the end of the season. As for us, we're desperate to overtake Juventus and get our first lead back at the top of the table since beating Juventus a couple of games ago. So, we take on Milan here at the San Siro. The stage is set for another big game. Both teams desperate to win for different reasons. But the first chance would fall to us in the ninth minutes. Forenzi gets past De Jong here. 
here and also wins us a penalty as well. The perfect start to this game was Ferenzi takes it round the former City midfielder there and as you can see the Dutch midfielder he just tugs on the shirt of Florenzi and I've said this so many times man like seriously I don't know why you know so many players tug on the shirts in this game because you would have thought they'd be coded especially on legendary to not do that because penalties are awarded so often for shirt pulls in this year's FIFA but even so penalty to Torino a great chance to take the lead just 11 minutes in it is going to be Poloski the punisher is he the punisher in this scenario yes he is because he sends the goalkeeper the wrong way, uh, wrong way and makes it Milan nil Torino one not celebrating against the club he started his career at as he does take the lead in this game here at the San Siro sending the goalkeeper the wrong way making it Milan nil Torino 1 and that's now his 26th goal in the Serie A this season and if we do go ahead and win the Serie A title this guy deserves to lift the trophy alongside Maximovic they both deserve to have one hand on it because the guy's been absolutely incredible all through the season but regardless Milan had a good chance here in the 15th minute but Polly's shot went way wide the post and behind for a goal kick so still 1-0 and from the goal kick we play out from the back as per usual chip it to Benassi who finds Baselli inside towards Gabbiadini slides it through towards Poloski who has the pace on Zapata beats him with a double step over, gets himself inside and what a lovely finish by Poloski as well. His 27th goal in the Serie A this season. This one not coming through a penalty against one of his former clubs. A really, really nice finish because he, as he beats a pass there, he's not a slow centre-back. As he gets back the, uh, the defender, he beats him with a double step over, cuts inside and with the challenge, with the slide tackle, having to shoot with the outside of the right foot as well in a pressure scenario, Poloski pays off, makes it Milan nil Torino 2. As you can see, Juventus were beating Napoli at half time by a goal to nil not good to see but even so at least we were doing our job and trying to inflict the pressure on Juventus going into the break in the 63rd minute a great chance for Milan to, uh, to get themselves back in the game here because as El Shirai goes down the right hand side he roulettes around his man tries to cross eventually it comes to Van Ginkel who finds the Young here plays it through towards Keizuki Honda the Japanese midfielder inside towards Menez and the referee gives a penalty to Milan and you know I, I mentioned many times before that Penalties this year, you know, are often quite debatable. But this one, I can't even understand why the referee gave a penalty because there wasn't a shirt pull or anything. Balanta just sort of runs and sort of takes a... I think there's like a little bit of an arm lock between Balanta and Menez, but he doesn't do anything. It's just a coming together of the arms. I can't see why that was a penalty. They didn't press circle or anything. I have no idea why the referee gave a penalty there. Menez didn't even look like he was appealing for it. He didn't go down or anything, but he also booked Balanta as well. Could not believe that. A great chance for Milan to get himself back in the game from the spot. However, Menez, well, I guess he just felt sorry for us because he chipped the ball down the middle like I do when we win debatable penalties. Penalties, and Fideli has a simple catch. I thought that was kind of funny. I always do that to the AI when I get a, when I get a debatable penalty, and the AI, the AI did it to me in this scenario, which I thought was quite funny. But even so, still Milan nil Torino two. And from Pedelli's catch, we go on the break here. Muru swings it across to the far post. Poloski wins the header. It's a brilliant save by Agazi. However, disbelief here at the San Siro because Poloski, who was on two goals going for his hat trick, gets himself an injury, and there is massive, massive concern here at the San Siro because as you'll see he does wave uh, to the referee and the referee does wave him back on the pitch as well which is great to see so he was able to continue but as Poloski takes it around to Chilio, they're looking for his third goal. He's denied by Agazi. Wasn't really feeling it for the next few minutes. So I decided to take off Poloski. Didn't want to risk him getting a serious injury. I thought this might this might be just like a three or four day injury. And he'll still be fit for the final game. But Poloski hobbles off the pitch. There is absolutely massive concern. And the best player of our season looks like he may miss the final game. The final chance fell to Milan. But this shot went harmlessly wide and behind for a goal kick. And it was how the game would finish. Milan nil Torino too. But despite winning on the penultimate game of the series, uh, season, sorry, despite taking this game and this title to the final day, you know, as you'll see in a minute, uh, Juventus did hold on to their win against Napoli. Despite taking the um, the possible title race to the final game of the season, massive, massive, massive concern for us, knowing that Poloski got himself an injury. He was player of the match in this game, unsurprisingly, scoring both goals as well. I was wondering, is he going to be fit for the final game of the season? Because we cannot afford to lose our top goal, uh, top goal scorer, the Serie A top goal scorer or our best player of the season as well. As you can see, being one point behind Juventus going into the final match day of the season, match day 38. Well, as you'll see, sadly, Poloski will miss the final game of the season against the Sena because he's out for three weeks. And how typical is that? We haven't had a single injury for the entire season other than Engels' training injury. And now on the final game, uh, sorry, the penultimate game of the season, we lose our best player for the final day. That is absolutely heartbreaking. But as you can see, with one game to go, just one point seven 
separating Juventus and Torino. Who is going to win the Serie A title? What a season it's been. Who do you think is going to win? Let me know in the comments by uh, commenting hashtag Juventus or hashtag Torino. Let me know. And whatever you do, do not miss the next episode, the final one of the season. But that is going to win the episode, guys. So as always, a big thank you for watching the video. Really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed the episode, then please do leave a like. And I'll see you for the next episode of my new career mode, which you will not want to miss very soon.